Welcome to part two of our two-part series on learning how to use tables in Microsoft Word. And tables, again, to review, are a way to get columns properly situated and more effectively created in Microsoft Word with no fuss, no muss, compared to using tabs in Word. So last week we showed you how to create the table. This week I'm going to show you how to work with your table to get any kind of an effect that you might want. We did show at the end of last week's tip that by default, when you create a new table, it puts these little grid lines in there, and those grid lines will print. If you don't want the grid line, I instructed you to do one of two things. You can either click anywhere in the table, then click Table from the menus, select Table, then go back to Format, Borders and Shading, and select None. That's the real fast and dirty and easy way to do it. Uh, if you want to get rid of them a little quicker and you can uh, like using the toolbars, you'll see this little bitty icon right up here in the corner of the table that has four little arrows going different ways. If you click that one time, that automatically selects the entire table. Then up on our toolbar, if I click the little arrow next to the border tool, I can customize which borders are showing and which ones aren't. So again, if I click on that little tool here on the left to select the entire table, click on the little border, border tool here, I can get rid of the inside border. And now you can see I just have a black outside border. The little gray grid lines do not get printed. If you don't want to see the gray grid lines, which I don't recommend, but if you don't want to see them, you can go to Table from the menus and then click Hide the grid lines, and then the grid lines won't show, and just the printable lines will show. I always like to see my grid lines, however, because it makes it a lot easier to work with my table. One other thing we showed last week is how you can select a row by clicking off to the side. Then I can apply attributes to that row that makes sense for that particular row. And as we're getting into more formatting this week, one thing I like to do with tables is create a header for each column. And so in this example, I've already made a bold Arial font for the header of this column. But I'm also going to do a reverse text. And what that means is I'm going to make it black on white. Right now it looks, or uh, white on black. Right now it looks like it's that way, but it's just because it's highlighted. But I'm going to highlight that row. We're going to click Format, and then Font. And again, I can use the toolbar to do the same thing. And I'm going to choose Font Color White. Click OK. And then we're going to go back to Format. And this time we're going to do Borders and Shading again. And then for shading, I'm going to choose black here because I want black as my background. Now, if I click off, I have a nice column heading for my table. Now, using that same technique under shading, if I want to if I want to make just this particular cell red to go with my apple, I have to highlight that cell and you have to do that very carefully going in the lower left hand corner of the cell, clicking one time will give you the selection for that cell. Again, if you have a hard time doing that, just click once in the cell, go to Table from the menus, select, and then Cell. Then I can go back to Format, Borders and Shading, I can choose Red, and then I can click OK. And now I have a red cell. If I want to make the blueberry cell here blue, I'll do the same thing. Click Format, Borders and Shading, Blue, click OK, and I have a blue. Same thing for green, Format, Colors. So you can get all kinds of fancy stuff done with that. One real nice feature of using tables is that I can sort the tables once I'm through typing in. So if I'm typing in addresses, for example, or phone numbers and I want to sort them, all I need to do is click anywhere in the first column or whatever column I want to sort by, click Table from the menus, click Sort, and then I can click uh, Sort by Fruit, because I've got my header fruit, and then you can also tell it whether or not your table has a header row, header row is the heading that we made, or no header row. If I didn't have a headline or a heading, I could click this and it would sort every, every uh, item in that column. But this particular case, we do have a headline, so I don't want that to be included in the sorting. 
So I'm going to click, uh, we do have a header row, click OK. And as you can see, my list is now sorted alphabetically and it sorted all the other columns in accordance with the sort that I did on the first column. If I click and I want to insert a column, if I click table, insert, a column to the left of what I just selected, it will put the column in between the two. And I'm going to put up here price. Now if I want to get a total, remember how to get an extra row, I just push tab on my keyboard. When I'm in the last cell, I push tab to get a new row. And we're going to put that we want a total of how much this costs in this particular cell. So I've got my cursor in the cell. I'm going to click on table again from the menus and this time I'm going to click formula and it's going to ask me do I want to add the sum of the above and I'll say yes and let's actually make that into dollars. So we'll put that right here, click OK and voila it added up for me that the above numbers are $500. One thing that I can also do here is I can write justify this total here so that it lines up more closely with my 500. And now if we do a quick print preview, you can see the table, how quickly we did that and how much formatting and even some formulas we can add in Microsoft Word. One last thing I want to show you about using tables is how you can use tables to create forms. A lot of times you see people, if they want to create a form, they'll type what they want as the field name, and then they use the old shift underline key to get their field space there. And try as you might, you will never get these two lines aligned properly because of the way our computers are laid out. See how they're just not quite lined up, this one's shorter than the other one. If I had another space on this one, now it's longer than the top one. You will spend forever and a day trying to get those lines lined up on a form that you want to look nice but you can't get it to look nice using the shift underline technique. But if you use the tables that are built into Word or any word processor, you will have a lot better luck. Okay, we're going to create a just an address and phone number type form for us to fill out. So I'm going to create a, my table here. Start out six columns, three rows. All right, it doesn't look like much of a form yet, but be patient. You're going to learn some cool techniques with Microsoft Word first thing I'm going to do is we're going to get rid of all of the borders. So I'm going to select my table, go up to my border tool, get rid of all borders, at least for the time being. Next thing I'm going to do for first name, they need to be able to write in this entire box. And when I put the borders back in a minute, I don't want this grid here to show. So I'm going to do what's called merge the cells. I highlight two cells, right click and merge cells. And now you can see my vertical guy is gone there and I can resize this first column so that first name lines up properly there. Now we're going to do the same thing with last name. I'm going to highlight two columns I'm going to, or two uh, cells. I'm going to right click, say merge the cells and the same thing happened there. I'm going to stretch out my title here a little bit by just clicking on the vertical bar and dragging to the right and then we're going to go to address. We want to highlight this entire set of uh, cells here. Right click, merge them. Now we have one long bar there. For city, now you notice in order to make that cell smaller but leave these other two up here the same, I have to highlight the cell. Then I grab the vertical bar and drag backwards. And go back to my border tool and say that I want my bottom border here click on that. Go back to last name here and again we're going to click the border tool bottom border and then it goes in the bottom border there. Now let's get rid of our grid lines just to show you what it's going to look like in a printed format. There is my beautiful form with all